Today we'll look at Vicor's method of paralleling and current sharing DC to DC converters. There are two methods of current sharing the DC to DC converter that Vicor has. One is an AC coupled method where if both of the converters are on the same PC board and the minus ends of the converter are tied together with a low impedance ground plane, they can be AC coupled with a, a capacitive method. If the two converters are not on the same PC board or the ground plane is questionable, the converters can be paralleled with a paralleling transformer. In redundant arrays, it is important to protect the load in the event a converter fails with an output short. If a converter fails with an output short, the converter that is still operating will feed that short, taking energy away from the load. Oring diodes are used on the output of the DC to DC converters to protect the load in the event an output shorts. To reduce power dissipation and to reduce voltage drops, oaring fits can also be used. Now let's take a look at the PR pin operation of the Vicor DC to DC converter. The PR pin puts out a 5.9 volt signal, about 40 nanoseconds in pulse width, and is referenced to the minus end of the DC to DC converter. It varies with line and load and is referenced to the minus end of the DC to DC converter and is used to parallel identical DC to DC converters. As we see here, we have a shot of the PR pulse, and it's about 6 volts in, uh, in magnitude and about 40 nanoseconds in pulse width. And here we see it's a reference to the minus end of the DC to DC converter. I have the ground lead on the minus end of the converter, and I'm grabbing the PR pin off of the uh, trace on the PC board here. And now we'll take a look at the PR pin in operation. Under a constant load and a constant line, the PR pulse will uh, put out a pulse at the switching frequency of the converter. Each PR pulse represents a power pulse of the DC to DC converter. So when the converter is operating at a constant load and a constant line, we should see an even train of PR pulses. As the load varies, the switching frequency of the converter will vary and the PR pulse train will vary. As the load increases, the PR pulse will increase. As the load decreases, the PR pulse rate will decrease. And here we see the PR pulse rate decreasing with the load decreasing. And as the load increases, the PR pulse rate increases. The PR pulse rate will also vary with input line. Given a constant load, as we increase the input voltage, the PR pulse will decrease. As we decrease the input voltage, the PR pulse rate will increase. The PR pin can send a signal as we've shown in the, uh, the scope plots, but it can also receive a signal. When two identical converters are paralleled you know, with their PR pins connected together, they will both want to put out a PR pulse onto the PR bus. Whichever module receives a PR pulse before it sends a PR pulse will follow the pulse train that it sees. Both converters will begin to operate at the same switching frequency and having identical power trains, they will both deliver the same amount of energy to their outputs and they will both current share. So this converter will heat up more so than this converter because this converter is sourcing all of the current. And the MTBF number of this converter will be much lower than this converter. So the system, if they were current sharing, the system will have a much higher MTBF number than in this arrangement where one converter is sourcing all of the current and the other converter is doing nothing. Now with the same 5 amp load and the module's current sharing, we can see now that each module is active supporting the load. So each module will deliver current to the load and both modules will operate at the same operating temperature and both will age at the same rate and the system level will have a much higher MTBF number than if they were not current sharing. And as we see here, each module is operating at the same switching frequency, having the same PR pulse rate. As we can see, converters can be paralleled for power expansion and for redundant arrays. And current sharing is important for better thermal performance, improved transient response, and better system MTBF performance. So we've shown that two converters can be paralleled, but for higher powered arrays, we can parallel more DC to DC converters. We've seen two modules paralleled using the PR transformer, but larger arrays can be created. 
Here, William has created a 25 module array using the PR transformer. Thanks, Dave. This array was created to show how the capability of the PR bus can be extended using buffering. This array uses 25 200 watt modules to create a 1000 amp 5 volt output. It uses two master modules in the center, which use the inherent redundancy in the PR bus architecture. Uh, those drive slaves configured in five sets of five. There's a buffer at the front of each slave set, which amplifies the PR signal and allows it to drive uh, a large number of modules. Current sharing for this array is very good, less than 5% change in uh, output current for each module. Using this, this approach to PR buffering allows arrays of this size to be constructed with relative ease. In fact, one of the hardest design challenges in creating this array was building the cabling to take such high output currents to the load. For more information on this array and how to design other high power arrays, check out the application note Designing High Power Arrays with Maxi Mini Microfamily DC-DC Converters, available at vicorpower.com.